it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, July 21st to Saturday, July 27th. Okay, so last week was quite a week, if I do say so myself. Of course, we kicked off the week with that first quarter moon in Libra energy. Now, I'm not about to jump into a rant or rave, and I'm going to be very, very careful with my words here. But take a good look at the major events that took place on the global stage over the course of this week. And it was within minutes of having that first quarter moon in Lady Liberty, in Lady Justice, in Lady Libra pop off on the 13th. Okay, that's when the shit storm started. Of course, we needed the shit storm to start because the major impact that we had over the course of this last week was that Mars and Uranus conjunction that went full stop on the 15th. Of course, the world was already in a state of affairs by that particular point in time based off of the collective energies reaction, which was also, side note, very disappointing uh, due to that first quarter moon in Libra situation pop off. However, not that I want to get too involved in it, but it was the required domino that needed to fall in order for us to find ourselves where we're currently at to either choose to continue to pour into division or finally choose unity. Okay, so we were wrapping up cancer season. We're wrapping up Mars being in Taurus energy. And we're also building towards the final hurrah of this full moon in Capricorn that we have yet to really see at its peak potency, which leads me to talk about this week. This week, if you're listening to me Friday evening and you're here in the chat, first of all, I want to thank you so much for being here. But we haven't even seen Mars shift into Gemini energy as of yet. That's going to take place here tomorrow on the 20th. Then we have this second full moon in Capricorn popping off at a 29th critical karmic degree on the 21st, which essentially closes out cancer season. And then 24 hours later, we're moving into Leo energy. The sun is in his rulership in Leo energy. We pop that off on the 22nd. This is when we're going to feel a renewal, a resurrected type of energy, a rebirth type of energy, because of course we're in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in Leo season. Season. And the real, true, raw, vulnerable, more authentic version of self gets triggered and activated with this Leo energy. We have a boldness, a bravery, a courage that we're tapping into. We have a sense of pride that we haven't had in a very long time. And our soul self now is asking to be expressed and animated through the physical form. So Leo season, because it is a fixed fire sign, first of all, that fixed energy is going to provide us a little bit of a quote unquote quiet time to stabilize. I say quote unquote because nothing is quiet these days. Um, and fire energy is going to dry us off very quickly, very nicely from all of the water energy that we've been sitting in for this past month of being in cancer season. And it is going to kind of put a little bit of a pep back in our step. But of course, that's not all. We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who, side note, already in the pre-retrograde shadow period, take a good look around at all the technological shit shows that have popped off even just today. Uh, Mercury is going to be moving into his rulership in Virgo energy here on the 25th. You should be paying special attention to the topics and themes going on in your life right now because we're only going to get four degrees into that Virgo energy before we go retrograde. We're going to backtrack in that Virgo energy, sneak back into the Leo energy and retrace our steps, taking us back to, you guessed it, just a couple of days ago. So, be very clear with the topics and themes that you've been experiencing over this last week. If you have your cancer season e-guide available, you're going to want to capture and journal all of this information down in order for you to reflect back upon in the coming of weeks to understand what needs to be revised, what needs to be rearranged, what needs to be revisited, what needs to be realigned. There's going to be a whole lot of moving parts from now until the fall. And Mercury's retrograde is definitely going to set those moving parts off in the both the best and the worst kind of way. So that's not all. The day after on the 26th, we have Chiron, the wounded healer going retrograde. So again, if you haven't listened to your July Zodiac forecast, you should definitely get on that. 
Um, you are really kind of doing a huge disservice to yourself by not staying ahead of these energies, not realizing where they're supposed to be manifesting in your physical realm. Um, but Chiron going retrograde is when we internalize that energy and we start kind of taking a little bit more of a straightforward approach to our problems, to our issues to our mental health, to our physical health, to our emotional health, to some of the situations that we've been trying to sweep under the rug here. Like we can't run from our problems now, guys. We have Saturn retrograde, Neptune retrograde. We have a whole, well, Pluto's retrograde, but that's a whole topic and theme within itself. We have this full moon in Capricorn being the final sweep to a lot of the damage and debris of the systems and structures that need to be collapsed before. Uh, heads up. Pluto's going to retrograde back into that Capricorn energy come the 1st of September. We're going to have to revisit a lot of topics and themes that need our 100% attention in order for them to make sure that they stay down. What do I mean by that? You ever step on a bug and the bugger just won't die? I know for those of you out there, oh, you shouldn't kill bugs. I get it. They're us. We're them. The whole kit and caboodle. Some bugs must die. We all do it. But you ever have a bug that just won't die? This is the whole Capricorn energy that we've been dealing with since 2008. We see on the greater, grander global stage right now, the let's call them domino effect events to put us in a situation to either further divide or finally unite. We see this, the final hurrah of having all of these greater, grander planets, these older planets going retrograde. This is a clean sleep. This is time for us to shit or get off the pot. We cannot go back to some of the things that we've absolutely closed the door on at this time. We can no longer be those versions of self. We know too much. We've seen too much. We felt too much. We've healed too much. We're not going back. And that may seem exciting for some, scary for others. That's okay. We feel all of those energies out in the collective. We feel the division of energies out in the collective. Chiron going retrograde, individually speaking, has us taking a good look at our own problems, has us being a little bit more of a warrior type of spirit when it comes to getting ourselves the help that we need to nurture and nourish ourselves back to a place of health and wellness and safety and security. It's what we need. We're building in this new identity. We just brought this new version of self out to play. We've been, you know, a little bit confused on whether or not this new version of self is going to get us to where it is that we need to be. There are fragments of the old egoic programming that are still alive and well within us. Chiron going retrograde, retrograde is going to have us analyzing the shit out of those old fragmented parts and doing something about it. Our wounds are the greatest assets in our lives. You have to stop running away from your wounds. Stop running away from the pain. That's where the power is. This is what Pluto is trying to do is to help us turn our pain into power turn that darkness into light. We see it happening on the greater, grander stage. We see it happening in our own individual lives. We're going to have even more emphasis put on our individual lives once Chiron kind of does this retrograde and we take a good look at ourselves in the mirror. So of course, this week is gonna be popping. We are gonna be closing out July for the most part. This is the last full week of July. We have Many disruptions taking place because, of course, if you've you know been around and you know what August holds, yes, there's that Lion's Gate portal. Now, do I believe in all portals? If you've been with me for any amount of time, you would know that not every portal is an actual portal. The Lion's Gate portal just means that we are moving through a certain system, star system, if you will, that does lend us a little bit more power than some of the other star systems. So are we going to call it a powerful time in our evolution? 100%. If you want to label that a portal, you go right ahead. But basically, all of the cards are thrown up in the air right now. The dominoes have started to fall in order for us to choose. And that choice point will be anchored in with that 8-8 timeline. And so we have a lot of chaos taking place in the world right now in order for us to see very clearly how many people are still sitting in fear and how many people are choosing love, okay? Choosing love, choosing passion, choosing understanding, choosing unity, choosing humanity. That's where we need to get to. All of this divisional crap is the egoic programming. It is the fear programming of the matrix. It is the stagnancy programming in order to keep us in fear, trapped for those higher beings to actually have an absolute feast upon. 
are we going to continue to allow them to have the greatest feast upon humanity? That is still remain to be seen. So I don't want to get into too much of a rant there. I feel like I've, you know, sometimes I just go on a little bit of a tangent trying to explain where the energies are shifting. We'll talk about that and more in just a second. But first, I have some things on my homework list that I have to address before we start talking about all these wackadoodle energies, all of these really wackadoodle events. So let's get to it. First of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for subscribing. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, checked out the community over there. I want to thank you for your continued love and support, especially seeing as YouTube has been a little bit of a bully as of late and has definitely given a good kick to my channel even though my channel was already down. So thank you for the continued love and support. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Again, couple of shameless plugs here. The Cancer Season e-guide. Although, you know, Cancer Season is almost behind us, we have two major events yet to pop off. Again, Mars moving into Gemini, that full moon in Capricorn. The Cancer Season e-guide is going to be pivotal for you to capture the highs, the lows, the everything in between because Again, it's a cardinal season. This cardinal energy is going to carry us into the next cardinal season, which happens to be Libra energy. And what happens around Libra energy, you may ask? Oh, well, that's interesting. We have another reset. Why? Because we have another eclipse season. Why? Because we have some karmic bullshit that we need to unpack, that we need to leave in the past, leave behind us. So whatever it is that we've been dealing with in cancer season, these are topics and themes that are going to be dragged out. OK, very heavily dragged out until the fall. A good reason to capture, to journal, to really just, you know, take note of all the energy shifts and how they're impacting your lives first and foremost. But with the end of cancer season comes Leo season, which means that you should be downloading your Leo season e-guide again. Please treat these particular workbooks as your energetic Bible, so to speak, to keep you ahead of the energies, keep you in alignment with the energy so that you do not get caught off guard and derailed. We're too far into the game for this, you guys. We have to be a little bit more responsible and accountable for staying ahead of the energy shifts. Astrology is the cheat code to the matrix. We're all playing the same game here, except one player let's call it one player has the cheat codes already. We're just slow to the game. We're just learning the cheat codes. Okay. So we, we cannot continue to let them have an advantage over us. This is why I'm going to continue to push the workbooks, to push the forecast, to push all of the information that I put out there because we have to learn the system that they have been using against us. This is what this is all about. Okay, so with that being said, there's a moon guide out there for your downloading pleasure as well. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm recording this very early Friday morning. I have every intention to launch that completed moon guide before the live chat here this evening that you're currently listening to. So somewheres in the timeline, uh, if F future Marley got her shit together, the guide will be out there already. If future Marley did not get her shit together, then that will be available here tomorrow. Um, but either way, we have this major pivot point, this full moon in Capricorn ready to pop off. It would be great, especially if you did the first full moon in Capricorn a month ago to just do this one and have those particular guides for comparison. Again, we were kind of in the damage and the destruction, the confusion, the rubble a month ago. Now we're starting to kind of see where it is that we have to create a to-do list on cleaning up the elements of the past before we can get super serious on building towards the new. And with, you know, Neptune, especially retrograde, we're not building towards the new anytime soon. Yes, it's nice to remind ourselves of the new that we want to be fighting for, that we want to be making progress towards, because that, of course, is the carrot that we need to stay motivated. However, until the fall, until the whole the whole eclipse season, we are going to be cleaning up the old. The July zodiac forecasts are out there for your listening pleasure. Listen to your sun sign, listen to your moon sign, listen to your rising sign. That is going to give you the greatest, grandest picture available 
on what kind of energies are being offered to you, what is working against you, what is working for you, how to override it. Again, learn the cheat codes. This is where we're at. We're in the year of eight. This is about power and control through major change and transformation, especially shedding the ego self and allowing the higher self to be in control. Those forecasts are there for your listening pleasure, for your help, for your assistance. And of course, as we close out July, I will be very busy on working on August's energy forecast for all the zodiacs as well. So as we near the end of the week, you'll likely hear me kind of drop little hints and clues to, of course, go ahead and download those particular resources as well. So with all of that being said, Let's talk about some ascension symptoms with the energy shifts coming at us, the energy that we're currently sitting in. I don't know if you've paid attention to the Schumann resonance at all throughout the course of this week, but we had some pretty powerful days and those particular blasts have been absolutely putting pressure on our headspace. Whether you have a headache, whether you feel like you have bobblehead, whether you have sinus congestion, um, for me, it kind of feels like I have a concussion. Um, I don't know if y'all have had a concussion, but it doesn't feel very good. It's not just the head that it kind of affects. It affects your vision, it affects your temperature regulation, it affects your whole body, your digestion, you're nauseous as hell, you're all over the place. It feels very much like we have a concussion. But let me also just say this. When you think about a con concussion, you have to have a good jolt in order for a concussion to actually take place. And I don't know about y'all, but the collective received that jolt this time last weekend. I am not going to say the words. It is talked about enough. I do not care to talk about it any longer. I have people in my DMs and in my inbox asking me when I'm going to share my thoughts on it. I am not sharing anything. If you have been listening to me for any amount of time, you will already know my stance. You will already know my perspective. You already know my thoughts and feelings. All I'm going to say is, is that that domino had to fall in order for all the other dominoes to fall in place in order to usher us into this ending and closure phase that again is still up in the air with a lot of the collective because what this event was supposed to do is the complete opposite of what the collective is doing. Uh, what I mean by that, this is a time to unify. This is a time to understand that we are all humans, most of us, um, we are all humans. We need to be fighting for the human race. This is not just about the shit show that popped off in the States. We have been actively, and I shouldn't say we as in the whole collective, but the majority of the collective has chosen to sweep what's going on in the Middle East under the rug. And I'm not really willing to talk about that either because I don't want to further perpetuate division. I do not want to trigger those of you that are in a certain belief, in a certain standpoint, in a certain perspective. I'm not about it. Um, if you've been with me for any time, any amount of time, you would know that I predicted all of this stuff how many years ago? Um, you know, I, I, I take no pleasure in being right. I take no joy in, in having these situations and circumstances be validated and confirmed. Um, I think y'all are still going to be super surprised at the ending. Can't wait for more people to understand the ending that we're actually actively moving towards at this point. And I'm not willing to talk about it because again, most people are too hypersensitive at this point, do not have the correct vantage point in order to have these conversations without getting butt hurt. And again, I am not here to further divide. I am here to try and unify. Therefore, I am going to tippy toe around this because those of you that have been with me for a long time, you already know. You know what I think, you know what I feel, you know where, where my mind is at. There's no need to further poke the bear. Okay, so we have this jolt. This jolt came with the timeline jump, of course. This is what the solstice energy was all about. Cancer season opens up with the solstice. It, it opens up with this karmic reset. And then the whole chapter of cancer season was further defining the choice point that we all are finding ourselves in. And so this jolt has a huge amount of pressure that is affecting the headspace. Yes, when huge amounts of light come into our cosmos, it does affect the crown and the headspace the most because, of course, that's where we're receiving this information. Um, but the jolt of that energy not going the way that 
certain players of this video game had anticipated versus certain outcomes that were already forecasted that they knew about. And again, I'm trying to be cryptic as F. So if you know, you know, and if you don't, don't worry about it. Um, that was a jolt to the system, to the system, to our bodily systems, to the system of the earth plane, to the system of the matrix, to the system of this overall uh, video game that is currently in play. That was a jolt. Many of us are suffering from that jolt with the head pressure, with the headaches, with the bobblehead situation, with the back of the head pressure, like somebody literally came up and, and got you from the back, if you know what I mean. Suck a punch. Um, Concussion-like symptoms. And yes, we're dizzy. We're confused. We just got sucker punched. Of course, we're going to be a little bit questionable taking a good look around. Our bearings are not legit. We are not stabilized. May I remind you, we're in cancer season, albeit the very end of cancer season, but we've been out in the ocean of motion, in the ocean of emotion, just bobbleheading it, trying to keep our head above water. Our legs are exhausted. Our body's exhausted. We've taken on too much water. We're hungry. We're all pruned up. We're just ready for a major change. The dizziness, the confusion, you know, when you've been on a boat, you hear me talking about a boat. Here we go again. Um, when you're on a boat and then suddenly you get on land and you still feel like you're on a boat, that's where we're at. That's what we're going through. It is it is very, very disorienting, but that's okay. We need a certain level of confusion in order to open up our eyes to different perspectives and different options and opportunities that we wouldn't even have considered even this time last week. Now, this pressure in the head, again, sinus pressure, Pressure on the back of the eyes, very concussed type of feeling, very, uh, I, I don't wish this on you, but if you if you suffer from migraines, you know how when the migraine reaches its peak potency and then it finally starts to kind of break and then the day after it breaks, like you feel like you got hit by a Mack truck and everything is very surreal and very euphoric. That's very much the vibe that we're sitting in. Bright lights bothering us, bright sounds bothering us, smells bothering us. Uh, physical sensations bothering us. We're just in a state of agitation. You want to talk about agitation? Let's talk about Mars. You think Mars is is got ants in his pants, ready to get out of this fixed Earth sign, a Taurus energy, where we've been literally stagnant in the moves that we've been able to make, haven't even been able to think because our tunnel vision goggles have been so freaking tight on our heads. You ever take a headband or a hat off and feel that release of pressure in your head, but at the same time, it still feels like you have it on your head? That is what we're experiencing. That's what we're talking about. The pressure is in our jaw. The pressure is in our necks. It is, it is the weight of the world is felt on our shoulders at this particular point in time. And it should be because the responsibility that we have on our shoulders, on our karma right now is so freaking intense. Okay. It just is. Now we're going to feel this continue to build until that full moon in Capricorn pops off at that 29th degree. And then as soon as the sun moves into his rulership in Leo energy, I'm not going to say that it's all easy breezy lemon squeezy, but it is going to be a whole hell of a lot better. First of all, we're going to get out of this damn ocean, give our bodies a little bit of a break. It is a fixed sign. So we are going to stabilize. It is a fire energy. Fire is great for what? Let's talk about fire energy for a second. First of all, it's going to dry us off from all of this emotion that we've been sitting in in cancer energy. That's great. Fire energy has the ability to burn through the cords of attachments to the past. What have we been learning in cancer season, my friends? Well, we've been learning where it is that we've been holding on to the past for dear life and where it is that that particular attachment is creating a fragment in the new version of self that we're trying to anchor in because we are operating from the old version of self in this new version of self's vessel. So the energy is not matched and that fire energy burns through the cords and it sets us free. And then what it does is it reignites a spark of fire or flame within us. It brings us back to our soul spirit self puts us in that heart and soul that we need to be in in order to do what is right for ourselves. First and foremost, what makes us happy, what brings us a sense of joy, what brings us a sense of passion, where it is that we can start living and acting a little bit more authentic, authentically. Yep. I almost hacked that. Thank you. Mercury post pre retrograde. My head is all over the place. Um, I apologize. Authentically. That heart and soul spirit, we need to be living in authenticity. Everybody walks around saying, oh, love is the highest vibration that we need to be in a frequency of. No, yeah, love is up there. But what vibrates higher than love is authenticity. 
You have to be the realist version of yourself here on the earth plane. And that Leo energy is going to help us do just that. So we are in for a major shift. We are going to have that pressure alleviated, especially from our headspace. But Lord Jesus knows it is going to feel like forever from now until the 22nd when the sun moves into Leo energy and we put this heaviness, this weight, this confusion, this destruction behind us. So you want to talk about, you know, we talked about that neck pain. That's kind of stemming from the weight of the world, the weight of our choices right now on our shoulders. Um, the bright light. So our sensory system is going through it. We just had this major influx of energy over this past week. It is definitely doing a number on our auric field. We absolutely need that auric field renovation and upgrade. So of course, we're going to have to deal with not feeling so hot in our physical bodies while a higher self does what they need to do type of thing. But this is having a major impact on our sensory system. So just as I previously mentioned, you know, when you have a migraine or you're in a state of concussion, you're sensitive to everything around you. You're sensitive to smells and sights and touches and the whole, you know, five senses are just a popping. Let's talk about the fact that our vision is changing. Vision, vision, vision. I'm going to be a little bit transparent with you guys. I'm going to share a little bit of a personal story with you guys. Um, over this past week, I had a situation where I went temporarily blind. I don't know if it was heat stroke. I don't know if I pushed myself too hard. I don't know if it was my CRPS flaring up. I don't know what it was. I don't know what caused it, but I was temporarily blinded for approximately a half hour. And it was a scary ass thing to experience right out of the blue. Now, did I freak out? Absolutely not. I just sat my ass down and I was like, okay, well, this is a new experience. Let's just observe what's happening, what's popping off. Of course, you have to do your work in order to make sure that you don't allow your physical body to go into an, a panic attack, basically, because your survival programming is kicking in and saying, bitch, there's something wrong. See all these, you know, it's like the dashboard of a car when all those lights start flashing like, oh, you've got a serious problem. You're going to want to pull over. Well, that's what your body does. But instead of calling for emergency roadside assistance, I sat my ass down, I breathed through it, I was asking the universe to just, you know, carefully and gently just explain to me what I did wrong or why this is happening, what it is that's going on. And from a physical body standpoint, I would probably blame it on doing too much out in the heat for sure. But energetically speaking, I couldn't help but to realize that it aligned perfectly not only with that first quarter moon in Libra not only with that major event that shot off quote unquote shot off around the world here this week but it also aligned with the huge influx of energy that was coming in from our cosmos here's the thing we timeline jumped therefore the vision that we had is no longer applicable no longer obtainable in a lot of ways just because the vision our physical vision gets disrupted it also has a direct correlation to the overall vision that now has to change and be adjusted due to the collective seeing something that they didn't see thus far we have to understand that these situations regardless of where your stance is on it as far as was it real was it not is it staged is it not blah 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 blah, blah. not getting into it don't care not important and for those of you saying, oh my gosh, she doesn't care. It's not important. She can't be spiritual. Listen, if you're still on that timeline, I feel for you, okay? If you get it, you get it. If you don't, don't worry about it. What I'm getting at is when we have a timeline jump, when there's an influx of energies, when there is a certain pivotal circumstance that changes the direction, the course, if you will, of where the collective was going versus where the collective is going to go now. Not only is that going to have a major impact on your physical eyeballs, but it's going to have an impact on the overall goal, vision, and dream that you were essentially trying to manifest. There's an alteration that needs to happen. You wanna talk about alterations? Mercury's about to go retrograde, guys, in his rulership and Virgo energy where we analyze the shit out of our lives. We figure out what needs to stay, what needs to go, where we have to rearrange our physical lives in order to stay up with the relevant events, circumstances of the karmic chapters that are now being unfolded for us on the collective stage and in our individual lives. And so we are in a state right now where there's going to be issues with your vision. Now, hopefully you don't have it to this severe extent in which I 
previously had it over this week and I hope that never happens to me again because that was not a fun thing to be experiencing even though I understood why it was happening I still don't want to have those experiences um it could be you know that you're seeing brighter lights maybe you're more sensitive to light maybe you're seeing orbs maybe you're seeing shapes maybe you're seeing the little glimmers of the matrix coding whatever the case may be something is changing in your vision we've been floating out here in the ocean right the ocean of emotion uh the water in our eyes has got our eyes dry dry as f burning sore right we're tired we just need a little bit of a reprieve here and so we're going to have those manifesting you know the ascension symptoms manifesting in our vision now one thing that comes with vision changes and comes with head pressure and comes with sensory sensitivities is the fact that it makes us nauseous as f oh my goodness i don't know if we've been on the boat too long and we're all about to get seasick or what but i have just been super nauseous yes i'm sure the heat doesn't help yes i'm sure the you know pushing my body to do things that i shouldn't be doing in this kind of heat has an impact too but at the same time the, the waves are getting choppy. We are intense. We are in the perfect storm right now, okay? I've been talking about this for quite some time, so this shouldn't be a surprise. The latter chapter of cancer season, of the solstice, of this full moon, of, of Mars on the move, of us being ushered into the heart and soul season, there's got to be a disruption. There's got to be an intensity. The waves are choppy as F. We're in the perfect storm, and we're all about to puke, okay? We're all about to puke. Now, whether you've just not been hungry or you're not eating or you're nauseous or the cravings come and then you eat something and then your stomach upset, whatever the case may be, our digestive system, because we're on edge, because we're receiving a lot of influx of energies, because there's a lot of nerves in our digestive system and we're just on edge, we're not settled, we're anticipating the ball to drop, so to speak, our digestive system is not the happiest place to be, okay? Um... We just got to get through it. You know, you can do a lot of things. You know, you can tap into ginger, ginger tea, ginger supplements, whatever the case may be. That will help settle your stomach a little bit. Basically, listen to your body. If you don't feel like eating, don't eat. Of course. Now, I'll have to put a disclaimer out there because then I'll have people coming at me saying, you can't tell people to not eat. That's not healthy. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Your 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 body is a is an automobile, okay? You need to put oil and gas in your car, even if you ain't gonna drive it, right? Your physical body does need energy, so let's not get so out of touch with reality that we just go on a hunger strike. That's not what I'm talking about. But if your body is having a hard time, don't pack it full of bunch of crap. Don't give it a lot of food to have to digest and process. Do you know how much energy it actually takes for you to digest your food? If you don't know how the body system works, I'm really going to invite you to doing a little bit more research and understanding the 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 machine that you are. Okay, just because we're in a state where we're not necessarily hungry doesn't mean that you deprive your physical form of food, of nutrients, of energy. You need energy. Your your body system needs energy. So what I'm saying is, is that listen to your body. If you're not really hungry, if you're nauseous or whatever, then we're talking small little meals of protein. We're talking, you know, juice, juice. We're talking smoothies. You have to get the nutrients, the energy in you some way. Okay. We're not eating for fun anymore. We're eating for necessity. And so that is a major shift that I think many people are struggling with because we've just been so, again, conditioned to have, you know, three healthy meals a day. And that food pyramid is the absolute most ridiculous thing that I think we've ever concocted here in the matrix. Absolute shit show for disease as far as I'm concerned. So listen to your body, give your body what it needs, but also give it what it wants. You know, I, I'm at the point where if I feel like I have a craving and I actually want to eat something and it just happens to be right before bed, no, probably not the best thing to do, but you best believe I'm going to put it in me. I am going to put whatever in me that my body is asking for at this particular juncture within reason. So again, you know, use your brain. Um, but at this point, like our whole lives have been disrupted our physical bodies are in a state of survival. Whether you want to believe it or not, that's what the egoic programming does. And our bodies don't know whether it is a threat that we are perceiving on social media or a threat 
like a lion about to eat us, our physical body doesn't know any different. We don't know. We just see danger, 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 danger. Our ego programming kicks in that survival system programming. Our bodies go into fight or flight mode. This is where we have to breathe, where we have to calm ourselves, where we have to ground ourselves and really get our adrenaline levels down. We have to stay calm. We have to nurture and nourish ourselves so that we're not in a reactive state. Super hard thing to do in a video game that has been basically designed to kill you, but we're doing our best at this particular point in time. Okay, so temperature fluctuations. Well, I don't know about y'all. I know it's a heat wave in a lot of different areas of the world right now. It is a heat wave, like holy wow. But yet I'm still cold. I still have waves of goosebumps that come over me. I don't understand it. I, I don't understand it. I don't know how we can go to go to sleep at night and have cold sweats, you know? I don't know how we could be sitting in the hottest, most humid weather that I think we've had in a very long time and be cold. You know, sitting there with a blanket on like a lunatic on my front porch. Everybody's out there sweating to death and I'm wrapped up like, my goodness, what is going on? Anywho, you got to do what you got to do. Now, that temperature fluctuation is due to the energy, the influx of energy coming in, moving through your meridian system in your physical body, because that's how the energy, the chi actually moves through your physical form. And that's trying to break through and break up a lot of the energy blockages that are still very alive and well in our physical bodies. We are not adjusting as fast as we would like to the ever changing landscape of the energy and frequency changes taking place on the earth plane right now. We're a little bit behind. Not to say that that is, you know, our fault in any kind of way, but like the timeline has been accelerated. Take a good look around. The domino effects happen pretty quickly, if I do say so myself. And our physical bodies just aren't up to par. Again, we've been out wading water, trying to keep our head above water for the last month. We need a break. We're so close to land right now, that land being Leo season. We are so close to it. We can almost taste that sand. We can almost feel that hot sand, that stabilized earth form right under our feet. We can almost feel it, but we're not there yet. We have a couple of days to go talking about uh, the wobbliness, the instability, if you will. Our legs, we got mad sea legs. We are just a wibbly wobbly and we about to fall down if we're not careful. So you got to be very, very uh, conscious of the steps that you're taking. It's almost like we're, you know, not really trusting that our legs are strong enough to even house our physical bodies at this point. And that is just pure exhaustion. The dizziness, the confusion, the sea legs, all of that. All of those sensations, of course, you know, really coming at us here because cancer season is coming to an end. Um, but we're just, we just need a break. We just need a pause. We just need to sit down. We just need a little bit of a time to just rest our bodies up. And granted, when we move into Leo season, it is going to be a full on hurry up and let's get, let's get this party started. Because I hate to, I hate to even wave this out there, but we're supposed to actually be having fun here. OK, I don't know if you if you need a reminder of this, but our whole point and I know I'm not I'm not speaking uh, from my high horse here. OK, I'm down in the trenches with y'all. It's hard to wake up every day and be positive. It's hard every day to remind yourself what we're actually doing here. It's even harder to remind ourselves and actually put into action the fact that we're here to create heaven on earth. We are conduits, energy conduits, channeling in these high vibrational frequencies in order for us to be able to have the power and control over our mind, over our emotions, so that it doesn't matter what's going on in our physical realm as we've created a state of paradise within ourselves. This is what this whole life experience is meant to be. We get distracted. Point in case, take a good look at social media. What is everybody distracted on? I'm not even saying it because you know, okay? I'm not saying it. Because you know, this is a distraction. Doesn't matter if it needs to happen. Doesn't matter if there's good, if there's bad, if there's ugly, if there's pretty, and it doesn't matter. There's a little bit of everything because everything has a little bit of everything to it. We have to be able to see things from all angles, all sides, all perspectives, all understandings. That's where we need to get at. 
It makes it very hard in this video game with constant distraction thrown at us to remind ourselves that our inner realm of peace, harmony, and heaven has to be anchored in fully. Okay, this is the year of eight. This is what we're here to do. That is your reminder. So the blahness, the sadness, the I can't take this anymore. I'm freaking done with this. I'm not happy. I'm not inspired. I'm not excited. That is a natural part of purging the egoic programming in cancer season. Cancer season is always hella emotional, always very karmic in nature, all very sad and isolating to a certain extent because we realize the detachment that is needed from some of the things that gave us comfort here in the physical realm. So we're kind of blah. Many of us are low on hope, low on, let's call it, the attitude of gratitude, we will be shifting into a much better mood and attitude, a better disposition in the Leo energy. But again, we're not there yet. The time, the days are numbered here in the cancer season. We just have to get through it. We have to breathe through it. We have to remind ourselves that we are safe and secure and stable, even if we aren't, because we get to dictate the projection of our reality. And when you tell yourself something, whether you're lying or not, whether you are manifesting good things or not, your brain believes you. This is why you have to be careful with the way that you speak to yourself. This is the way that you have to be careful with the narrative that you allow to consume your mental plane because your brain does not know any better. Okay. Your brain only knows what you tell it, what you allow it to perceive. So this is why we have to be boss up with our energy, with our emotions, with our thoughts, with our inner dialogues, with our inner narratives. Fake it till you make it if you have to. But we have to be plucking out the silver linings. We have to be creating a realm and world and reality within ourselves that we would actually be happy to live in. As long as you are okay within yourself, you're going to be okay outside of yourself as well. We are going to continue, continue the temperature fluctuations, creating the cold sweats, the sweaty cocoon-like situation at nighttime. My sleep has been hella disrupted. I don't know about you all, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I'm not sleeping. It's just the times in which I'm sleeping are weird as F. They're weird as F. This is why I'm a true believer that time has shifted. I feel like, I don't even think it's just timelines and energy at this point. I think there's physical structures changing on the earth. I know the poles are in constant motion of, of you know, shifting and, and moving, but something's going on with the actual earth plane itself. Yes, there's new energies. Yes, there's a new influx of energies, but there just feels to me like there's other systems, there's other cycles coming to an end and therefore beginning that are so overlapping with each other right now that we don't know if we're coming or going. But we know that it's dizzy. We know that it's disrupting our sleep. We know that I don't know about y'all's dream states, but my dream state and dream content has been absolutely wackadoodle. Um, we are purging karma. We are purging darkness. We are purging temptation. We are purging cravings. We are purging the most basic operating system of the survival programming that our physical body has stored in it. And so, you know, our sleep is likely going to take another hit. We're going to go through another shift with our sleep state, with our, um, I'm going to say dream content as well. Um, but we are in ending, closing, purging, cleaning up phase. Okay. It never feels good. It always feels good to throw a party. It never feels good to clean up after the party. Right. So this is where we're at. We're cleaning up after the party and for all of you saying, well, was the party fun because I haven't been having fun? I don't know. I locked myself into a bathroom and waited for everybody to leave. I have no clue if people had a good time. I don't even care. I just, you know, I want to party by myself these days, not really looking for a company party. Um, but at the same time, it never feels good to clean up the mess the day after. And this is the stage that we're in. This is the stage that we're going to be in for a little bit of time here. However, it's not going to feel like this. The Leo energy, the shift into Leo season is going to make things a lot more bearable, if you will. We are drowning out here in cancer season. We're drowning in the ocean of emotion. We will not be drowning for much longer. We are going to find ourselves on land. We're going to be revived, resurrected with the soul energy from the sun. 
and we are going to go on to do some great things here in Leo season, but we're just not there yet. So basically what I'd like to leave you with is that it's time to shit or get off the pot. I know I say that quite often, but we are literally at the make or break situation. We are at the pivot point. We are at the juncture. We are at the point of no return. Okay. And many of us going through it. So we're all going to join arms. We're all just going to give ourselves like five minutes to be, you know, a pody little whiny victim. Okay. But after that five minutes, we're all going to boss up and put our cosmic panties on. And we're going to, again, re-enter out on the battlefield, boss up for this next period of war. Now, talk about war, Mars and Gemini energy. We're going to see a lot of anger. We're going to see a lot of frustration. We're going to see a lot of manipulative communication tactics with Mars in this Gemini energy. However, we are also going to tap into genius where we can plan and strategize our own individual plot pass. Oh my goodness, guys. I am so apologetic for my mouth. My, my goodness. If this is any indication of what this Mercury retrograde is actually going to be for us, look out. You should start making your tinfoil hat now because we're all going to need some sort of, of protection here for this Mercury retrograde. It's already having me tongue tied. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we are we are bossing up to a new level. Again, the Leo energy going to put us in a boldness and a bravery and a courage energy that we haven't had in a very long time. But it's always darkest before the dawn. And these dark days, these last dark days of cancer season are jam packed full of energy shifts. Mars moving into that Gemini energy is going to be a totally different perspective, totally game changer type of energy. Think about two years ago around the time when we were entering into, I want to say, hmm, 2021 to into 2022, um, that that's kind of where we seen, uh, I'm going to say a, a good chunk of the structures that we're currently watching collapse when they got hit first and foremost, they had a serious wound brought to them at that particular time. This is the continuation of that. And we are going to be planning and strategizing like nobody else's business. We are going to be exploring different options that we weren't even open to just days ago. And we are going to have a lot of supportive energies really show us the way out of this particular shit storm of debris. So let's all grab a garbage bag. Let's do our part. Let's clean this, you know, host party mess up together. And again, in true collective fashion, let's link arms. Let's boss up. Let's willingly step back on the battlefield, ready to go for this next chapter. So guys, that is all the information that I have for you this week. I am going to encourage you to do the work going to encourage you to be bold and brave after you give your fi yourself five minutes to whine and cry it out. And then we're going to boss up. Then we're going to be better than we ever have been before. It is going to be a rough couple of days coming at us here. And then we're going to get a little bit of a breather. So let's do the work. Let's be proud of ourselves for all that we've done thus far, all that we've kind of gone through. Let us just take a moment, put into perspective where it is that we're coming from and where it is that we would like to go from here. I'm sending you so much love. We'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.